Swifters, it's Prof G, and I'm going to refine our code with a quick change to show you how we can use an optional value for our ID property to eliminate a bool value that we don't need. So consider this as a quick refinement video for our to-do list project before moving on to saving data. I'll eventually update the earlier videos to include this refinement, but right now I'm racing to get the rest of the videos up for my class in their first semester of Swift UI, so I'll keep this in as a quick update lesson until the end of the semester. Now, the issue that I'm not happy with is using an additional variable to indicate whether or not we're adding a new record. While there's technically nothing wrong with this, we don't need to do this. By the end of this lesson, you'll see that we've eliminated the extra new to do bool value that we were using when we created a new to do item in the sheet when we clicked on the plus button in the toolbar. Let me show you how we can eliminate this through better model design. Let's head over to the to do model and I'm actually going to highlight and cut out the UUID code here. Cut it out with a command X. We want it on the clipboard because we'll use that in a bit. Then I'm going to define this as an optional string with colon string question mark and I'll change let to var. Now what this will do is that when we create a new to do, the ID will initially be nil until we've assigned it a new value in our code. Now we can use the fact that it's initially nil when we create a new to do to figure out if we should treat the to do as a new to do, then we'd give it a new UUID and we'd append it to the to do's array. Or if the ID is not nil, then we'll continue to update it in our array of to do's as we have been before. And to do that, we're going to head over to our view model. So let's open the to do's view model file. And in our save to do function, I can eliminate this second parameter here, new to do, which is the bool value. We no longer need that. And instead down below, we'll change the if statement to read if to do dot ID equals equals nil. So if it's been created, but we haven't assigned an ID, then we're going to assume that this is a new to do. And if this is the case, we want to update the to do property with a new UUID. Now, the way that we're going to do this is first, we're going to create a new to do value with var new to do, setting this equal to the to do value that we're passing into this function. Now, why do we need to do this? Remember, if you option click on to do in our parameter up here, you see that it's a constant when it's passed into the function. Remember, even if we pass in a value from a variable inside the function, Function, this internal parameter is a constant. So we can't update to do's ID property. We need to create a variable so that we can change the value that's initially in this constant. But we can do this down below. So we'll just say new to do dot ID equals and we'll paste in the UUID code that we cut out from our to do struct. And now that we have this new to do, which is of type to do, not to be mistaken for the bool value that had the same name that we were passing in, but that we just got rid of, we can take new to do and pass it into the append. And that's it. No more need for an additional Boolean value, but we've got to make some more updates before our code works. First, our three placeholder data values up here, the ones that we're just using to test our code for now, these guys are all going to have an ID of nil, and that's not going to work because we need unique IDs for our different values in our to-do list. So I'm just going to add ID colon and paste in the UUID code comma in each of the three values inside the parentheses of the to-do initialization statements. And while I'm here, I'm just going to refactor and rename my other two functions down here. I'm going to change delete to delete to do, highlighting delete and selecting refactor rename. And I'm going to do the same for move, refactor rename that to move to do, just to keep the names consistent with save to do, which is above this. Now let's head over to the detail view where we can get rid of this new to do Boolean value that's at the top. I'm just going to highlight and delete that from the properties at the top of the struct. And the error down here in the button action for the save button refers to the fact that we no longer have a new to do. So I'm just going to highlight that new to do parameter and backspace over it and the comma. Again, we've just removed that attribute from the save to do function. So now this is going to work. And one final change, we head over to the to do's list view. And in the code where we present our sheet, where we initialize a new detail view, we no longer have new to do in here. So I'm just going to highlight and delete that parameter when we call this, make sure there's no comma in there as well. And that's it. So you can try out the modifications in live preview and you should be able to add and move and delete rows in our list. And now we're ready to move on to actually saving and loading data in the next lesson. Keep hacking.